This snippet is converting HTML to CSS in Expression Web 2. I'm Matthew Hendershot, presenting from Zoom In Online for Microsoft. Modern web standards, W3C validity requirements, and the importance of search engine optimization put websites and pages created without consideration for these in a very bad predicament. Change the depreciated code that they're made of or become depreciated themselves. Expression Web includes a collection of tools that help the designer identify and remedy these issues. In this exercise, you will focus on fixing a front page theme list. While it looks like your typical unordered list in design view, what's created is in fact a table with images to serve as bullets and no actual list elements at all. First, unzip the file font to css.zip to a location of your choice on your local computer. Open Expression Web. If the last site opened is visible, click File and close the site. Click File, Open Site. The Open Site dialog opens. Browse to the location where you unzip the files. Click the site Font to CSS to select it and then click the Open button. The site opens in Expression Web. In the Folders List pane, double click the sub site named Front Page Theme Site to open the site in Expression Web. It will open in a new window. With the subsite open, double click menu.htm in the folders list task pane to open it in your workspace for editing. Because we know that we can't trust the code even in the code pane, we will look at and copy the content in a browser window. On the common toolbar, click the preview in a browser button to open the menu.htm file in a browser. In the browser, set your cursor just above the table containing the various soups, and then click and drag to highlight the entire table and its contents. Right click the highlighted area and in the context menu click copy. Return to the open front page theme site and click file exit to close the site and that instance of Expression Web. In your remaining instance of Expression Web click the drop down arrow next to the new page button and then click HTML. A new blank page is created. Set your cursor in the design pane. Right click and then in the context menu click paste. A copy of the browser's renderings of this table is pasted into your page. Take a look in the code pane to see what it is you're dealing with. You'll see lots of font tags, B bold tags, nested tags, and all manner of bad code. Each tag that has an issue associated with it is underlined in red. Hover your cursor over any of the red underlined items and a tooltip will appear telling you what the deficit in the code is. Set your cursor in the code pane and press F9 on your keyboard. This keyboard shortcut will cycle through every piece of inappropriate code. As you can see, there's a lot of code that needs to be fixed. Because this code is so bad, we won't attempt to fix it in place. Since this page is heavy with an unnecessary table, we'll just get rid of it and start over. Click the X at the top of your workspace to close the page. Do not save it if you are prompted. On the New Page button, click the drop down arrow and then click HTML to create a new HTML page. Set your cursor in the Design pane. Right click and in the context menu click Paste. Notice the Paste icon in your Design pane. Click the drop down arrow on it and then click Text Only. The Paste Text dialog box opens. Select Plain Text and click OK. Only the text from the browser is copied and pasted into the page. Now that there's clean plain text in your page, set your cursor in the Design pane just before the first letter of the text and press the backspace key on your keyboard until there's nothing to the left of your text. Looking at the items in the browser view, the different soup names are followed by a description of the item. This arrangement is like a term with a definition. HTML has a construct for this very thing, the definition list. Highlight the text in your design pane and on your common toolbar click the drop down arrow on the style box and then click DT for definition term. Look at the code pane and you can see that your text is wrapped in both a DL and a DT tag for the definition term. Set your cursor just after the last letter of the text string classic crab bisque and press enter on your keyboard. The text is now wrapped in its own DT tag as well as the text under it. Set your cursor at the end of the text string describing the soup and press enter on your keyboard again. Now the description is wrapped with its own DT tag as well. We actually want these definitions to be wrapped in DD tags signifying a definition, but we'll handle that later. Repeat the above process for all of the soups and descriptions in the text. When you're done, you'll have a page that looks similar to this. Let's define the definitions. Set your cursor in each description below the soup name and click the DT tag that contains it. 
In the Styles dropdown on the Common Toolbar, click the DD tag for the definition. When you're done, the page will look like this. At this point, you're just about done, but it doesn't look anything like the original browser rendering, so we'll use CSS to correct this. On the lower right of your workspace, you will find the Apply Styles task pane. If you don't see it, click Task Panes and then Apply Styles on the Common Toolbar to expose it. We're going to style this page's definition list so that it looks similar to the original browser rendering. Click New Style. The New Style dialog box opens. In the Selector field, type DL. For this exercise, we'll use Book Antiqua for the font family value, which isn't that great for the web since not all visitors will have that font. As a countermeasure, type comma serif in the font family field. That will specify a generic serif font for those who don't have the Book Antiqua font. In the font size, we'll use 90%, and in font weight, we'll use bold. Click the entry on the left titled Background, and in the Background Color field, type pound FFFFE1, which was the background color of the table that contained the original list. Click the entry on the left titled Position, and enter a width of 300 pixels and a height of 100%. Click OK to close your new style dialog. Now your list will look like this. The list is looking much less plain and more like the original browser rendering. There are just a couple of more things to fix. First, the definition terms should be the same color as they were originally. Click the new style on your apply styles pane and in the selector field type DT. In the font color field type pound 800000. Click OK to close the dialog. Your page should look like this. The next job will be to override the default behavior of the definitions having an indent. On your Apply Styles pane, click New Style. In the New Style dialog, type DD in the Selector field. Click the entry for Box on the left side. Clear the Same for All checkbox under Margin and give the field for left a value of 0 pixels. Click OK on the New Style dialog. Now your page will look like this. All that's left is to add an image to the left of the definition terms. You'll find an image in the images folder in the folders list called bullet1.gif. Drag and drop it just before the first letter in your first definition term. On the accessibility properties dialog, give this image an alternative value of bullet and click OK. In the Design pane, right-click the newly inserted image, and in the Context menu, click Copy. Set your cursor in front of each of the other definition terms and paste the image. On the Common Toolbar, click Save. Name this page NewMenu.html and save it in the root of your site. On the Common Toolbar, click the Preview in a Browser button. Compare the content of the old list to the new one. You'll see that now they're very similar. Let's finish off by bringing the font size up a little bit and indenting the definitions by the same width as the image. On the lower right of your workspace, click the Manage Styles tab. Right click the entry for DL and then click Modify Style. Change the font size to 110% and then click OK. Right click the entry for DD in the Manage Styles pane and click the Modify Style. Click the entry on the left for the box and give the margin left a value of 37 pixels, the same width as the image. Click OK to close the Modify Style dialog. Your page should now look like this. On the Common Toolbar, click the Save and then Preview buttons to compare your new list in a browser. That's it! By using basic HTML tags in conjunction with some simple CSS styles, You've taken a motley mess and brought it down a great deal in size. Compare the code you see in the page that you just made to the code in either of the text areas on the Focus Fix HTML, and it will be clear to you that there's a tremendous savings in file size. Beyond that, the definition list has semantic value, and the lack of broken tags and endless font level markup make it easier for non traditional browsers like screen readers and search engine robots to follow. Thanks for watching. I'm Matthew Hendershot from Zoom In Online, presenting for Microsoft.